Good evening and welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Now the All Lord News Index was down over 1% last week in what was a very volatile week. So stay tuned as we'll discuss our thoughts on that shortly. We'll also take a look at the Australian sectors and for our main topic in tonight's show, we will get into trading volatile uranium stocks that can double your investment. First up, we'll share our hot stock tip for the week. So sit back and relax again. Tonight is jam packed as we have lots of emails to answer. We'll also take your phone calls and give the answers to some of the important questions around the market. Tonight we're excited to share our thoughts on some great stocks like Regis Resources, Paladin, Bannerman Energy and the Australian sectors and more. So get comfortable as we'll get into those soon. I'm Dal Gillam and I'm your host for tonight and joining me are two of our team of highly experienced analysts and professional traders Janine Cox and Philip Tortevsky. And together we're Australia's most trusted stock market educators. Good evening, team. How are you, Janine? Fantastic, thank you. And yourself? Oh, look, I'm super fantastic, and I might get better later in the show because I'll have a beer in my hand. What about you, Phil? Well, I'm joining you. <laughs> Give me the beer and <laughs> let's there? get to it. After the show, <laughs> uh, not, not during the show. Anyway, tonight, as mentioned, we do get into the sectors in the Australian market, but first, let's take a look at this week's hot stock tip. Phil, I know you've got an awesome one for us tonight. What I is it? I do. I've got a good one. So tonight the hot stock tip is Regis Resources, stock code RRL. So let's get straight into it. On your screen right now is the market index. And uh, the snapshot of Regis, it is a gold producer and explorer with over a decade of consistent production and reserve growth. It's some metrics on this one. It's got a 2024 year-to-date performance of negative 4.3, a one-year performance of negative 5.23, versus the sector it, it is beating it which is negative six and the a6200 is negative 13. so not all doom and gloom not too bad it's got a market cap of 1.5 billion and ranked 249 so in the top 300 uh, would be known to both institutional and retail so let's get to the chart right now we'll bring up the chart of regis on your left is the monthly chart and on the right is the weekly and i want to focus on the monthly chart for now because the reason this one caught my eye is you know, Janine, we all often talk about repeatable price action <laughs> with stocks. And um, this one really could be doing that right now, which um, if it were to be the case, will show a lot, a lot of potential in the future. Um, and what I'm talking about is I've marked up, you can see with the percentage tool here, the four major pullbacks on this stock. The first one being in February 2000, where the stock fell 97%. And then not long after it had another major pullback, November 04, where it fell guess what? Another 97%. 97%. So, hey, you know, it's... You've uh, got my interest already. Okay. So, as we move along, the stock made that another nice bull run coming out of that all the way up to the high in November 2012, where it's fallen 81% before making that significant low in June 15. Obviously, we've had another really, really nice bull run until the most recent all-time high of July 2019. And what do you know? the fall is 80, almost 81%. So with that being said, obviously if price were to repeat and this cycle were to uh, come along again, then we're looking at some huge, huge growth um, all the way up to $6. I've also marked, just to zoom into price action a little more, that horizontal line here, which I believe right now uh, is the most current level of resistance. You can see that there was an attempt around that. It's about $2.25 where the stock's tried on almost five occasions as I hover my mouse cursor to break through it and it hasn't yet. But that being said, this one might be the one, um, just because you can see I've got these arrows in gray where if you just analyze those arrows, you'll see that each time this pullback was quite deep, the pullback after that is quite uh, shorter. And of most recent price action, this is the shortest pullback we've had. So if you're talking about that supply demand, Janine, between buyers and sellers, this one could be the one to break on through. What do you reckon? Have I done it right this week? Oh, look, I think it looks great. Uh, the interesting thing about it, though, is that the gold price is really high mm. and this one is really low. So how do you explain that? Well, I mean, you know, it, it's nice when stocks move in unison with, you know, underlying commodities yeah. or what have you. But, I mean, this is a company itself. It produces. It's mm. not exactly the gold itself. It, it's all relying on, on its business practices as well. But, I mean, 
look, if it can mm. <laughs> remotely get close to what the gold price is, then there is so much potential here. So, so if it shoots through this level, where's the, um, the next level of resistance could be, let's just squash up the chart and have a bit of a look. I'll get the crosshair out there, which um, will be interesting. So somewhere around, what, um, $2.80, $3? That's uh, probably reasonable, isn't it? Yeah, look, I mean, obviously it's been consolidating in this, you know, sideways type move. So for those traders looking for that extra bit of confirmation, you want to see it get through at least that $2.25 first before you got super, super excited. But, you know, given the way it's formed, I think, you know, really start watching it. And as you mentioned, you just put that $2.30 or $3, would you say about three bucks yeah. there? Um, if it can get to there, then that's okay. But I'm thinking if it's going to repeat the previous price cycle, then we're looking all the way up to, you know, mm. $6 long term. Mm. Uh, the only thing that I'd be um, watching too is this low here. If it took out the, turned around and took out the low, obviously that's not going to meet your criteria because what you're saying is it's got to get through that level first. That's really the important thing. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, look, these hot stock tips are all about highlighting, I agree with that. highlighting mm. um, good looking stocks. You know, mm. it's not necessarily we should be buying right now or we're looking at a buy. It's just that's a great point. Yeah, highlighting mm. what we think looks nice and 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 seeing how stocks unfold. And if there's a bit of education in that as well, then that's. Beautiful. Perfect. Great. Love the hot stock tip. It goes down 90%, 90%, 80%, 80%, and the next time it's going to go down 70 and 70, right? There you go. <laughs> That's what we reckon. Anyway, well, that is it for our hot, weekly hot stock tip. Now, shortly we're going to get into our topic for the night, but before we do right now is your opportunity to get involved in the show and have your questions answered. Remember, we prioritise phone callers, so pick up your phone now and dial 039290 or you can text your question to the number on your screen. Now the first caller into the show right now gets a free copy of my book, Accelerate Your Wealth. So pick up your phone and dial 03 9290 Now while you do that, tonight we'll give you our thoughts on the sectors in the Australian market. So let's get into it. On your screen right now is a watch list of the sectors on the Australian market. Let's take a look. All right, what's happening there, Phil? Look, we've got uh, information technology at the top of the leaderboard there, um, up 20%. Financials following not so closely, up 10%. I'd, I'd actually expected that sort of a gap between the tech sector and the financials, but what's really interesting is consumer discretionary is hanging in there, up 9.26% with real estate, which has, been real, has done really well. But utilities is one of the ones, and industrials, these ones in the middle, I think are the ones to watch at the moment to see what they do. Um, utilities up 4.5 and industrials up 4.4%. Of course, the ones below that are all the ones which potentially, which right now are not doing anything, but these ones could actually have the highest growth um, going forward, except for perhaps consumer staples. We, you know, we still can see some potential downside there, but but they could turn around. But we don't expect the same sort of gains from consumer staples as what um, healthcare and communication services and materials have the potential to do. So materials is obviously the lowest one on the board at the moment, down 6.5% right now. But look, moving on from that, we could talk about one of these sectors. Phil, which one do you think we should chat about now? Yeah, look, I mean, we've been speaking about materials and energy that we they, they were the first ones to come out of their low. They were to pull back first. So, And I mean, a big benefactor of that would be the utility sector because, mm. you know, water, gas, or, and they, they provide the service to the energy market. So um, mm. how about we look at How about we do utilities? that? Great idea. All right. So um, utilities, if we're looking at the... Um, chart here, we can see that there's actually some significant resistance, but given that the market's gone through its high, if utilities takes out that high, it's all blue sky overhead um, from there because we're, the GFC high is here, so the price action has been well above that level post the GFC, so while that is some resistance, and if we do see it turn and um, I guess burn, if you like, <laughs> if it actually turned and reversed strongly, so Stocks like AGL and Origin, if they turned around and fell away quickly, then we could see um, a pullback below this low here. But as I said, a strong move above that high, and we're in blue sky territory. I agree 100%. Set a perfect. All God, right. You're not even going to argue with her. No, no, no. Look, we're, oh, <laughs> Do we she, have to she, argue every time? She mentioned that know. she was about to buy some pink boxing gloves the other day, so I thought, oh, no, if I know. I actually did. I actually did, and worried. they are really, truly in my car. 
Okay, I'm not so going to give you any. just watch out for that. From now on, I'm not going to give you any more hard times. Well, that <laughs> is it for our thoughts on the Australian sectors. But before we get into the first email, remember to get your questions answered live on air. You will need to text or call into the show. Now, you can also send your questions to info at wealthwithin.com.au and we'll answer them in next week's show. Now, let's get into our first question. Our first email is from David. He says, hi team, CBA looks like it will run up through its resistance level at $120. It has gone up for six consecutive months. Do you think it is too late to invest for the short term around six months? David, now Janine, CBA, I know you like this one. You know I like banks. I know you love banks. <laughs> you can bank on that, can't you? Which bank? Okay. <laughs> you love my jokes, don't you? I'm not getting into your joke. <laughs> I don't mind All right. it. <laughs> okay, it's Phil voted. All right. So you can see there we've gone to an all-time high, as he said. Resistance around that 120. I just wanted to show something interesting here. Uh, let's just have a look at some of these levels. We've got a level close to, say, let's say $90 there on CBA. Um, the, the important thing is to have a look and see whether things are repeatable. So we've got another one close up to that um, 107 or 110. And then the next one, perhaps we might see come up a little bit higher. So CBA may have actually run out of steam temporarily, but it still could have. And we did this on another show. If you haven't seen our shows on the banks, then go back and watch those shows. There's a lot of really good information on banks there for yeah. you. Um, but looking at this move here, we can see how the closes on these months are all close together. They're all around just below that 120. So I think he's right about that. I'd just keep an eye out um, and watch over the next three weeks. So as we said on last week's show, April can be a really strong month on our market. But um, following this move, we could see a temporary pullback. I still see more upside for CBA after that. Mm. Any words, Phil? Yeah, look, I mean, seeing as we're talking about repeatable price action, I'll just zoom in a little. And, um, you know, Dave mentioned it was looking for a short-term trade about six months. Yep. So with that thought in mind, I do think that he's, this is a stock that he could be looking at because if we just look at this period here, March 2020, you see how it had this nice extended run out and then it had this little period where it kind of slowed down. But look what happened following for the next three, four months, almost six months, it continued to go up higher. And that to me looks like what's going on right now. We're seeing that nice extended period with a bit of a slowdown. So if it can pop its head through 120 strongly, there is the potential that you get you know, good growth for the next three, four, five, six months. Mm. So mm. maybe a little bit of short term resistance, maybe one or two weeks down mm -hmm. and then yep. taking off again. So there you have it, David. Now we have a caller on the line. Uh, welcome to the Australian Stock Market Show. Who have I got on the line? Uh, it's, hi, Dale, uh, it's Peter. Hi, welcome to the show, Peter. Thanks for calling in. What's your question for us today? Um, I'm holding a uranium stock um, called, L uh, it's EL8. Yep. Yep, I think I got in about 48 cents. I've been holding it for about a month now, I think. Um, yeah, just uh, want to get your analysis and yeah, see if it's uh, looking okay or not. All right, what, do, you, do you mind if I ask you why you bought it? Um, because the uranium seems to be like there's been a, a pickup in uh, interest in the uranium levels. Yep. Um, I noticed like um, over the last uh, couple of months there's been a, an uptick in the candles, and yeah, it's looking uh, a lot stronger than yep. it than it was. Okay. So you're looking short, medium, long term for this one. Um. Well, probably medium, medium to long. Okay, fantastic. Well, the guys have got up on the screen, so they'll have a good look at it for you, Peter. And perfect show for you to ring in anyway, because we're talking about uranium and uranium stocks a little bit yeah, later. Thank you. So thanks for Appreciate calling in, that. Peter. No worries. Thanks, Dale. My pleasure. Okay, EL8 Phil. Yes. Um, you look, we've got the chart up on your screen. It's the monthly chart, and look to me, it does look like it is in a short to medium term uptrend from that perspective but he has bought it in a level here 50 cents where there is quite a bit of congestion you know the stock is uh, tracking a little sideways now if i do just something which i know janine you're probably going to be happy with and if i zoom out a little further <laughs> That's to, the exciting show, part, to <laughs> show the whole history of the chart you can see that this stock you know obviously is trading at levels right at the all-time low so um and we've spoken about this in the past a lot there is that potential stocks that are trading around these levels that sure they can break out but they can also 
experience this sidewaysy type movement for a very, very long time, even go bust. Um, so just keep that in mind. It doesn't look like it's a super liquid stock from my perspective, um, Janine. Yeah, I agree. And look, one of the things that's interesting, if we just um, bring the chart back a bit so we can see what's happening in the more recent price action, don't sort of fall in love with these sort of stocks and think they're going to keep rising. I can see where you're coming from because look at that close that happened in January, really strong, and then it did an about face the following month and really hasn't gotten on like Phil said. But it's done that sort of thing before. You can see this huge rise here way back this was in what's that march 2022 and then it didn't about face again and then just kept falling away so it's not to say that it's going to take off again some of the sometimes these moves are not um, commodity specific if you know what i mean it's more company related um, there'll be a bit of the influence of the, the whole push up on the uranium at the moment but if we go to the weekly chart just quickly and have a look what's happening with the shorter term price action because that that really allows us to appreciate what you're seeing. It is finding support and the highs, the lows are actually getting higher and then there was this nice move out. So I do think it looked really good from this perspective, but all of a sudden it got sold back down again. The fortunate thing is that it hasn't taken out this low here, mate. So if it does, then I'd be really concerned about it. I wouldn't fall in love with it. I'd just, you know, cut um, your losses and just get, get out, I would, if it was me. Uh, if it went back below that point. But if it pushes up higher, just stay with it. So can I wrap that up? So if both of you are okay with this stock, you think what he's done is okay, where he's entered okay, um, and it should be okay, but you're issuing some warnings just yes. in case. Yep. So you're just a little bit cautious. You're not totally convinced on this stock. Just because of the volatility, but it should tell mm. us in the next two or three weeks the direction, so I just wait for that. All right, there you've, there you've got your answer, Peter, and thank you very much for calling into the show. If you want to be like Peter, pick up your phone and give us a call, 92909988. Now we do have a text, and this one is from Alex, who is asking us about... Corey uh, Limited, I think that's how you say it, Q-O-R is the stock ticket code. Um, he says he's been holding it since we talked about it last and that the charts are looking really good with certain news. Thanks, Alex. So what do you reckon, Janine? Wow, mate. I mean, this, these are the ones, that, so those exciting ones that just blow off and take off. Incredible. The question yeah. is now, what do you do with it? I think that's they just the told me that I think he got in at 27 cents, I think. 27 yep. cents. That's beautiful. So a nice little entry in there. Like yeah. this was similar to what you were looking at with Regis Resources, how mm. there's these sideways moves that Phil had identified and then it just takes off. Um, the, the, there are two -ish things you could do here. One is you can take your capital off the table so that therefore your money that you originally put into it's protected and just trade with the profit. And really for something like this, if it's a long-term buy and hold, then obviously you want to allow a little bit more movement in the share price because it may just come back and fill that gap um, and then before it takes off again. Or alternatively, you can try to trade really short term on this thing just to take some money off the table. That um, at the moment, given the way that it's unfolded, I'd probably take the money off the table if it was me and just have a look and wait and see what it does. So you're going to take all the money or just part of it? I'd just take my capital off at take this point. Take your capital off. Mm. Okay, so that's an important distinction. What do you think, Phil? Yeah, I might think a little different here yeah. um, because, you know, with these particular stocks, especially around the 20 cent mark, you can see that when it does get going, it gets going. Like you're, you're looking at previous examples of something around here, it's gone up 200%, and then it got going around July 2020, and it's gone up for another 200 odd percent. My only uh, concern with, like, obviously you got the trade right and mm. it's showing you momentum, it's going in your, in your direction. Um, I totally agree with what Janine said in terms of it can come back and fill that gap, but it can very much just keep shooting on up in a straight line all the way to uh, potential 200% return. So mm. I wouldn't be so quick in getting rid of it um, especially because it's shown its hand to tell you that. I'm not saying get rid of it. I'm saying um, take to even take what, yeah what you originally put it, into protect it. Protect it. Yeah. 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 I'm a bit risky. I wouldn't. <laughs> so you're just saying I want to protect the capital. Yeah. So let's take my capital off and let yeah. the money. Mm. Let us play with the market. Which, which, yeah. which, I mean, at the end of the day, is going to affect how much profit you're going to earn at the end. Well, we don't as know. Well. We don't. We don't know. You know, it's not personal financial advice, but it's trader specific as well because that's, right. that's what you would do because you're an experienced and professional trader. But for someone who's inexperienced, who may not even know anything about trading, um, it's high risk right now. For so them. what's the exit strategy? That's what you're saying. Mm. Yep. Yep. That's what the exit strategy yep. is. So just be careful yep. with all of that. But I mean, I'm more I'm more in line with Phil because I'm a little mm. bit more of a risk taker, taker than you. But just be careful, Alex, because, you know, we can fall into some sort of false sense of 
reality, I suppose, and not being rude to you, but obviously it's gapped right up. Now's the important time to make the right decisions for you about where you might exit and how much you might do and, and what your plan is for moving forward. Now we're going to move on to our next email. This one is from Melissa. Uh, and Melissa says, hello, can I get your analysis on Aristocrat, please? My analysis says there is resistance around $46.00. Is this a good entry price? Thanks for your advice, as always, Melissa. So, Janine, Arist Alyssa, Melissa for <laughs> <laughs> Melissa? Alyssa for Melissa, uh, Melissa for Aristocrat Leisure. What do you reckon? Well, look, I actually think this is really interesting. If we can just have a look at the chart. Mm -hmm. Um, so it's actually traded up right near its all-time high. So therefore, it's just met resistance there. Often stocks will trade right up close to it before they reverse. This one's already started. Um, there's not much of a distance between the top of the, the price section here if you were to try to get in above that before the high. So it's only 4 or 5%. And sometimes stocks can come up, they'll hit that level, and then they'll bounce down again and lose momentum. I would probably wait until it went through that high there um, if you're interested. But I, I want this thing to actually have more of a decent pullback. Um, even if it went up to that line again, pulled back and then went through, then I'd be really happy. But if it just pulls back, you know, these four weeks and then went straight through, um, I'd probably think it would just run out of steam when it gets through $50 being a nice psychological resistance level. Mm. You know what? I, I don't want to say it, but I'm going to have to disagree again on this. I think different. I'm only in terms of Janine's running out to get so those boxing gloves. Uh, yeah. So you'd buy it above forty six. I'm worried about saying. getting much. No, 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 no. I, I completely agree with what you've said. Or um, in terms of not buying it above forty six, but in terms of having wanting a more of a pullback. Mm. Um, if we draw this momentum line through here, you can see that to me. It, it can I just clarify what I said? Oh. Okay, let's just, so we don't have to get the boxing gloves out. Um, what I was talking about was this sort of a thing. Oh, so okay. I want to see it Sorry. actually come back and test that okay. before it breaks up. You see, see? That's why the... Um, oh, I'm losing control here. <laughs> that's, yeah, <laughs> the well, arrow's going everywhere. Yeah, it's got well, a mind of its own. <laughs> Look, that changes things, doesn't it? <laughs> um, from that perspective, sure. I mean, th that's totally fine. I just think that the current pullback that we've had here on the weekly chart... Mm to me is is more than enough in terms of a potential uh, bounce from this level. N not to say that it is going to do that exactly because it doesn't look like it yet. We always speak about trading on that confirmation, mm -hmm. but um, there is definitely potential that it can um, bounce back up from here. So yeah, keep watching. So she think, you think she's got a good buy? I mean, she, she said to, she wanted to buy above mm. 46, which mm. I mean, the stock's now trading at 42. So, uh, yep. I mean, you could probably get a better entry if you yeah. if you work with price action a bit more, if you can try and see some confirmation above the 42, pretty much exactly like what Janine's drawn. I'm glad you started using the mouse because I can't, they can't see your finger when you... Well, that's that European heritage coming out of there. Last week he was all over the place, so people can't see that while you're watching the chart. I thought, I thought I'd uh, <laughs> fix the mistake, but um, yeah, look, just, uh, if, just go back to the chart one more time, that... The, if it were to do some confirmation type price action like what Janine's got with this trend arrow, then for sure, why not? Yeah, it's fine. Look, I'll, 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 Janine does it. She touches the screen all the time too, so don't worry about <laughs> it, mate. Well, that is our take on Aristocrat. Now a word of warning. Things may get a little heated in here very soon because for tonight's topic, we're going to be discussing uranium stocks, which if you've been watching the show, you'd know it's not a very popular topic with a particular expert on our panel. Now, regardless, you <laughs> regardless, uranium stocks are moving at the moment, and so profits can be made. Given this, we'll uncover some fantastic opportunities that you could double your money with. And on top of that, we'll be providing you three tips on when the best time is for you to buy. But before we get into those stocks, I wanted to discuss uranium's future in Australia. Now, if you follow uranium, you will know that Australia is a serious player in the global nuclear energy space. We currently hold around 28% of the world's uranium reserves with around 10% of the world's energy coming from nuclear. Now, what I find quite interesting is that we store and sell uranium to the world, but we haven't yet taken the step to implement it here in Australia as an energy source. That aside, it's being used in many countries around the world, so Let's take a look at this graph showing the forecast supply and demand. 
Now you can see that the production of supply of uranium is forecast to fall from around 2030, but look at the green line, which is the demand rising to the right, and demand is forecast to keep rising. So I wanna ask you both, what are your thoughts on uranium and uranium stocks? I'll go to you, Janine, first. I was hoping you'd go to Phil first. <laughs> no, I want to get the bad news out first. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we're talking about uranium, there is no secret to how I feel about the stuff. You know, when we dig things out of the ground and then we actually don't know what we're going to do with the waste, to me, that's a big no-no. But that's a separate issue. Tonight, we're talking about the stocks. So um, stocks, well, let's face it. Um, the prices have been rising strongly for uranium. The stocks have been moving up. So there are opportunities short term. I'm not so convinced about the medium to long term because look what happened to lithium. You know, mm. it just crashed. And we could see a similar sort of thing happen mm. with um, uranium. If the price of uranium gets too high, there's a lot of companies, corporates out there that are going to be, um, you know, the bottom line is going to be, like, can I say? Um, <laughs> Screwed. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? Tight. Okay. Um, you know, affected by the <laughs> price of uranium if it continues to rise. And there was were some brokers saying once it gets a hundred, around 110 or over, um, that's that sort of tipping point. So mm. um, via beware and make sure you've got a really good strategy if you're looking to do this because Any they're higher it? risk. Yeah, look, yeah, the uranium stocks, most most of them are more that speculative type of stock, you know, under a dollar and um, quite volatile, uh, quite risky if you don't understand how to read volume and all that kind of stuff that we've spoken about on the show before. But um, in terms of the, the uranium spot price is nowhere near its all-time highs. It is rising. And I mean, if you're looking at, if you're following a trend, it is a bit of a trend at the moment. So um, mm -hmm. yeah, I mean, look, there's opportunity there right now. There's nothing to say that the uranium price is going to fall in fact it's looking like it's going to keep going high so with opportunity then if you if you are looking in that space and why not okay well how about we take a look at a chart of uranium to see how much more potential upside there is all right so um we'll bring up the chart of uranium on your screen right now is the unx spot so this is a spot spot price of uranium and you'll see that you know since the low in october 2016 is pretty much when uranium got going the initial point you know it started making slow moves up from 2016 all the way to 2019 and then you know may 2021 things got really quick and obviously the price has shot up you know going from if we go to that low the price has gone up almost 470 percent but the the all-time high on uranium on the um, spot price here is what have we got here up at uh, 159 so we're still uh, a well away from that level um, and this type of parabolic move is not uncommon mm. with this particular um, chart and commodity. So right now, while the trend's going, I think, you know, it's giving me no signs to say that it's going to slow down or go the other way. See, the interesting thing is that 75% of the um, production of the uranium that's needed is actually coming from the production that's current production. Yep. The rest of it is coming from um, uranium that's been warehoused or stored, if you like, that was a, that came from um, you know um, weapons. So originally, okay. that you know when they first started with uranium, it was all about the weapons. Yes, now that's a was. whole different story that we don't want to get into. No. But if the demand keeps rising like that graph shows, then uranium the uranium price could well go through that hundred and ten dollar mark that we talked about. But for how long will it stay there? You can see that it's tried to get through there already and actually hit its head and has fallen away. So. With such a, maybe we'll see a bit of consolidation for a little while is possibly what I'm thinking here with the uranium price before it then tries to make the next move. But I guess, you know, if we if we go and have a look at an ETF now, um, mm. which we've got a chart of an ETF, that will actually give us a better idea um, of what's happening Well, let's here. have a look at the ETF, yep. Yep. Um, so look, the, this ETF is quite interesting. So short term, we could see there's been a push off the bottom. A, we're seeing that con sideways, sideways consolidation happening. Uh, we've come off the high, so similar sort of look to the way that the uranium chart looks. But this chart tells me that there's also the potential for a bit of a down move, um, you know, for the ETF. It could pull back to $8. We just need to see a bit of a pullback in price. So I'd be watching this. If I'm thinking about uranium stocks, I'd be watching this. Wait for that pullback to happen. And then it, if it starts to take off really strongly from there, then I would seriously think about what 
um, my interest is with the uranium if I was to th think that I was interested, which I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> so I have so to we stick figured with out my which principles. one of the panelists is not into uranium, <laughs> yeah, right? Yeah, that was pretty quick and yeah. easy. But you've also got the other question is is how big's the demand going to be? Because uranium is not one of those commodities that's in everything. You know, mm. it's used primarily for power or destruction, one of the two. So how many nuclear power plants are going to come online in the next 20 or 30 years? There's and a they, lot Because they, they take a long time to build. Oh, six, average time, six to seven years. Yep. That's why one of the reasons why they didn't want to have it here. And also because there's been examples of where they've spilt, the plan was three to five billion. They've spent 30 billion um, bringing these plants online. So yeah, that's, that's normal. And a lot of this information is coming from the nuclear power um, associations themselves, not mm. from the, like the government, you know, when I'm looking for it in the research of what's actually Governments happening. never bring anything in on, on budget either. They mm. never do, they never probably ever will because they always run over time and over and budget. And the other interesting thing that the Nuclear Association released is they did show mm. a graph of, mm. and I haven't got it here, but they showed a graph of all the different energy sources. Yep. And, you know, because, you know, um, coal and um, oil are still well and truly in the race mm. at the moment. And things could change. We don't know at the moment. Everybody's driving to this um, net zero, but um, that could change. And that could affect could what happens with about that one too. the uranium <laughs> price. You, you, you're very well placed to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, and so beta shares, ETF, I'd probably look at that and say, well, OK, that's probably a reasonable option here for an, to use an ETF. OK. Um, use an ETF rather than buy the stock. To so buy the say. ETF rather than okay. the stock, yeah. So that's tip number one. Mm -hmm. So that's tip number one is to buy the ETF. So the next thing is um, if you're looking at um, buying into the stocks, then to make sure that you buy one of the biggest stocks. OK, so that's your second tip. We'll wait for the third one anyway. But now you've seen where the price of or price of lithium is headed. Another important question I have is how risky are uranium stocks and how can investors mitigate the risk? Do you want to give us an idea of what that is? Yeah, I mean, uh, liquidity. It is the main risk. Um, liquidity and also the, the potential for the stock. A lot of the ones that are, you, we just showed an example, how they can just track sideways at you know, under 10 cents for a very long time. And then you've got to uh, worry about the opportunity cost of your money sitting there for such yeah. a long time and the potential that it gets delisted and all the things that can happen with these kinds of stocks. So I would say um, have an understanding of how to judge liquidity. You know, we've spoken before about looking at the depth of the market, seeing if you can transact at the prices you want to transact. At a fair price, yeah. At a fair price, um, being able to get in and out when you want. Um, they're all so important. And if you can do all that, then fine. Mm. Mm. There you go. Yeah, look, I agree with Phil there. There's some really good points there. I'd also just look at, um, in terms of your capital, how much money you're wanting to invest in these sort of things. Because I classify stocks in three groups. One, the top 20 shares, they're your A-class stocks. Then you've got shares outside of that, which are your B, B class, class going out to the 100. Anything outside of that, your C class. And these stocks, you know, a lot of them, because of the volatility, I'd be putting into that C class, except for Rio. Paladin probably would go into the B, but everything else, I think the C. Mm. Okay, so that's really some great advice from uh, Phil and Janine. So there you've got three tips f uh, from our team about what you need to be doing, but okay, but we have kept everyone waiting long enough. Can we now bring up some uranium stocks that have the potential to double? Now I want to go to you, Phil. What's the first stock? Yep, so the first one's the, the big boy, uh, Paladin Energy, which is one of the, the, the more- The big boy? Yeah, well, in this particular <laughs> space, it's one of the more liquid <laughs> stocks. Um, when we get through the rest of the list, uh, you'll see why, but- um, Paladin is one of those stocks, if you can see the chart, it's really had a stellar run since May 2023. I mean, all we see is green here, and it's been running for the best part of almost a year now. So with that kind of run, you know, we kind of saw that back in February, March 2020. There is the, the uh, potential that it does do something like this and have a slowdown or a pause and pull back. But I mean, bigger picture, it is coming out of a real significant low there at um, Jan 2020. So in terms of potential upside, just one look at this monthly chart, if I just put the price percentage time, we're talking, you know, two, three, four, five hundred percent in this. So it is positioned in that in that area when we talk about, you know, the stock's life uh, cycle, where it is, it's positioned near the low. So potentially uh, making a new expansionary phase. So one definitely to put on your radar and watch. You know, we talk about these sort of stocks as potentially not being a long-term buy and hold because of their volatility. But sometimes, you know, these sort of stocks, if they continue to trend and you can follow that trend on the monthly chart, 
it may actually make sense to hang on to it. People often think, oh, look, you know, for a stock like this, you've got to trade it short term. But yeah. if it did trend and start like it is starting to move into that nice trend on the monthly chart and continue with that, it may actually allow people to hang on to it for longer than what they expect. But that's an interesting point. I know we get, especially in stocks like this, but mm. other type of low cap under a dollar stock, people think the only way to make money of them is short term. Mm. Mm. And yet the people that do try and trade them short term are the ones that have the least amount of knowledge, skill and experience to do so. And that's really what you're saying, isn't it? It's like, yeah, you can make some money out of this, you can double your money out of this, but how much risk are you taking on with that? Doing well, it? The, you know, people have doubled their money on this stock yeah. already if they were hanging on to it. Yeah. The question is, can you double it now? Phil's talking about levels overhead which could take, it could be a long-term thing that we're talking about. This could be sh more short-term upside to $2. So it may not be so much doubling your money, you know, in the near term, but we need a decent pullback, which I'm sure Phil would agree with before we're going to know how far we're going in the next move. Yeah, yeah, look, for sure. Um, the, the only thing with these stocks you've got to keep in mind as well is that, you know, if we just look at that period back in July 04, that pullbacks sometimes don't come to... Um, too deep in, in you know you're seeing one two months at most of a pullback and then obviously it shoots on up so just be prepared when you're looking at these kinds of stocks that they do run and when they do run you may if you're looking for something in particular you may um you know don't don't expect too much from a pullback sometimes okay so the next stock is uh, all right the next one is 92 e and um, this one's actually gone into a trading halt. So why I kept this in the mix, it, not just because we had it in the um, promo for it, <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> it was also because, um, because of the trading halt. This is the sort of thing that can happen with these types of shares. Correct. So that's the other point. So stocks that, like lithium stocks, we saw the same thing where stocks were being taken over. Also with uranium stocks, we could see that as well. And this is a classic case where we've got one that's in that situation, potentially. It's a trading hold. Not sure what all of the details are, but um, it could be that there's someone sniffing in the wings for that one. Mm. Mm. Yeah, it could be good, mm. could be get, could be bad. Mm. I mean, you know. Well, it could be, could be. So what do you? So what? Have a look at the chart and tell me what you think of the stock. That's well, what everybody wants to know. It looks really nice, doesn't it? Like so just the setup. It did you read the trading halt at all? I haven't read the trading halt at this oh, stage. Okay. No. So it's in a trading halt, waiting for an announcement. Now, often people, when they see a trading halt, it's like, oh my god, yeah, yeah. it's mm. a trading halt. You know, I'm going to lose all my money because I'm in the stock. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But it's not always like that, is it, Jimmy? Well, if something went wrong, like Phil said, <laughs> and there was a problem with, with a mine, then you could be in that situation. Well, that's could mining. be in in that, but it's mm. not necessarily a no. bad thing. Could be good. It? Could be good news. Could be yeah. very good news. Yeah, it could be. They could be just waiting because they may have found a better deposit or, yep. or, um, you know, something like they've got a new CEO that's going to drive their share price a lot higher. There's all sorts of different reasons why the stock could be coming out of a trading. Hold. How long has it been in the trading hold for? I couldn't see. I'm not sure, but it would have been not long after we started talking about running this one. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> it would have been. <laughs> All right. So what's the next stock? So next up, we have Bannerman Energy. Now, another stock, look, obviously it's had a, a quite a decent run. If we just zoom into price action, you can see that from the May 2023 low, it's been up again almost a year, and it does look like it's coming to attack these levels at about $4. But if we zoom out, you can see that another one of those stocks that really in terms of what it's done, it's come out of that all-time uh, high back in October 07 and obviously fallen away and given us that real basing type movement. So the question lies now, is it ready to start that next expansionary phase? If it is, that's going to be good news for the stock, or is it just going to continue you know, doing this sidewaysy type action um, until, uh, you know, something were to happen, either good or bad? So mm. that's that's what you've got to weigh up. And, and that's why uh, I, I totally understand when people look at these from a short term perspective, but you, you're taking risks getting in there, um, period, for getting to, down to this end of the market. The more risks you take by getting into more and more stocks like this, sometimes it's just better off, you know, you find the one that you want and having that a bit of a longer term approach may work out better. You know, you buy one time, you wait for the the, the, big, the, long, the, the big one to play out mm. um, rather than trying to pick 10 of these because maybe seven or eight of them might end up doing nothing. Mm. Good idea. Absolutely. Well, I mean, obviously, I'm going to ask your opinion on the stock in a second, but I want to ask you before that is what makes these stocks run like that? Mm. 
just um, perception a lot of the time. Mm. So, okay, the price, in this case, the price is actually shot up so of uranium. So yep. there's something solid behind it, but often it's perception that drives these sort of shares at this price level. So you're thinking that some, when the price has started to run on these stocks because uranium's gone up, more volumes come into mm. it and then people are going, oh, it's gone up two, three, four hundred percent, whatever else, you know, in the past, it can do that again. So that's mm. what you're saying? Yeah, but, you know, you can't mm. think that every single uranium stock that's out there is going to run with the price of uranium, but I'd be looking at the ones that are. Mm. So what do you think of the stock on the chart? It looks good. I mean, it looks good if, from what we're looking at. It's coming, uh, to me, it looks like it's coming out of that real strong basing period that it's had for the best part of, you know, 10 years. And and now it's poking its head up, showing a bit of a medium term uptrend. So it, it looks OK. I'd be I'd be looking at this for opportunities. I'd be okay. wanting to see a pullback first and then you another move up. You want a pullback and you like it. OK, so how about we bring up the next stock? All right. So next. Is it is just as exciting? Do you want to get into this one? DYL. It, they all look similar, don't they? Yeah. You know, these recent moves up with the uranium activity but it'll be interesting to see what happens when the mm. dust settles this one looks nice as well we just um, have a look at the long-term picture same sort of thing we're on off long-term lows um, i just grab a horizontal line there so we can see that coming across here across these highs here i'm just going to expand that up so that you're not sort of getting your magnifying glasses out there trying to see what's going on but while it stays above this sort of level, which is probably around 130 approximately, then I think it's fine. If it falls back below that level, then I'd be a little bit concerned, especially if it took out this low in March 2024. Don't just assume that it's going to go straight up is really my message. But if it starts to take off and heads above 160 strongly, then I'd say it's in, on its way again. Hmm? Yeah, look, I, I had this stock as the one of the hot stocks a, a couple of months ago. You did? I did, yeah. So, um, look, uh, exactly right, Janine. Above that $1.20, $1.30 level where it, you know, poked its head up. And I like the fact that, you know, since making this low in September 2016, albeit it is volatile and you do see that with price action with these stocks, but it is making, you know, higher highs. It is breaking out to new new highs. So um, it's done that again, you know, recently in February 04. The pullback's quite healthy here. And I agree, if it can hold these 128, 129 and, and pop its head back above 170, 180, then I think uh, just a resumption of what's been happening. Okay, mm. I've got a question for you, Janine. If you've got a portfolio like $10,000, that's what you've got, how much would you put into a stock like this? Look, you know, you could argue to put in less than a normal position. So if we if we look across the portfolio, we've got 10 equal positions of $1,000 each. Mm -hmm. Then you could argue, well, you know, you either put in less than a whole position or you just put the whole position in. Otherwise, what's the point of having the, the stock in your portfolio because it just will mm. be it'll be so small it won't have any tr real effect on the portfolio anyway yep. so this is where direction's really important on these types of stocks before you actually make that commitment so making sure they're moving up in an upward direction and mm. not just i know phil and i talked about this on the market report yesterday a lot of people think they've got the direction, but they haven't got the direction. If they haven't wait for the confirmation of direction, they think, oh, well, the last couple of bars are up, so now it's up, and mm. it's not. They could be suckers rally. So we're talking a whole different way of understanding what direction actually is, mm. and that momentum is supporting Yeah, there's that probably way. about four or five things that you'd want to be confirming with that in terms of making that direction, um, you know, understanding that it has got the momentum behind it. Okay, I'm not going to ask you what those four or five things is because it'll probably take us a while to talk <laughs> about them anyway, but we do have another stock, don't we? Yes, we do. Next, we've got Boss Energy Limited. Now, yeah. again, look, it looks good from, you know, March 2020, which a lot of these are actually coinciding with that spot price, that uranium spot price coming out of that low. They've been running... It looks similar to Paladin, doesn't it? Yeah. In that sideways consolidation, the nice breakout from it. But Absolutely. It's, it's actually slowed down a bit more than um, Paladin has. Yeah. And I mean, look, if we just... Now, I'm going to guess here, but if I zoom out to the left... Well, actually, surprisingly, it's through its previous it surprised high. me. Contrary to a lot of the other stocks, this one's actually breaking out through all-time highs. So we talk about stocks that are trending and trending well. Well, this is the pick of the bunch for me. Mm. Uh, this it looks good. This mm. one's broken all-time highs, trending well, um, looks relatively liquid, you know, up five, up at the $5 mark. So uh, probably the best one for me. I think it's in a trend, and I don't see any signs that it's going to stop going up. Mm. Well, look, you're looking at me as if to say, what am I going to come up with <laughs> now? <laughs> Can I say, Janine, I just sit in awe of some of the words of wisdom that come out of your mouth, and I'm being sincere. I'm not being joking. Thank I think, you. That's you very know, kind of you. People watching often will hear, it's interesting, people hear an expert talk, but they don't necessarily appreciate the value of what they're saying. 
because they're sitting there with their own perception because they they look it's like you can't fly like an eagle if you hang out with turkeys and a lot of them hang yeah. out with turkeys in these areas thinking oh this is great this is great but when they hear an expert speak they don't get it because they're still listening to the gobble 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 with the turkeys mm. and you guys are eagles you know what you're doing with these stocks and this is why i suggest people who are watching this and hearing what you're talking about and giving and those tips that you got and they should be listening to this because it's designed to help them make a lot more money long term and i know you know this stock looks pretty good at the moment well know? look i mean like phil's saying let's just have a look at that um the angle of that trend there and i just need to grab that trend line there but um, so this is a nice little trend up that rise there that we're seeing. So this is what you're liking, isn't it? The fact that it's hugging mm. that line. Mm. Um, if it actually broke that line strongly, obviously we, you know, we'd change our view on the stock, but it could continue to push higher. I'd just be a little bit concerned about the strength of that reversal that's there temporarily. Um, if it came back and consolidated around four dollars, I wouldn't be, you know, unhappy with it. I'd just be watching for the next move up. So, yeah. I'd like to see a strong rise above that um, last week's high. Okay, mm. so let's have a look at Rio, which it's our last stock for today. Yep. And that would probably be a surprise one for people that we're this actually talking about. This stock looks great. Um, mm. I really like Rio, and it could be an easier stock for people. But the challenge we've got right now is that the these two highs here, um, as you can see, so. People talk about um, double tops, and I'm not going to go into the rules about how you confirm that here right now, because there are a few things to consider. But if the stock went through that strongly, then you know it's blue sky for Rio above that. And something that I often do with the traders when we're um, talking on the forum is we actually set. I just want to show everybody this because it really creates a different perspective about um, Rio and any stock that you're looking at um, when you're you just put bl um, some blue sky above the chart when you're looking at a stock and it really changes your appreciation of the potential for where these stocks could go through and what it really means to break that high so um, a line across those highs there you can see how the resistance from the GFC high and these highs are still in effect so you can imagine that once that GFC high is truly broken and these highs here are broken the mind boggles about where the potential upside could be for Rio, but mm. it's got to do it and it hasn't yet. Well, I know. I mean, obviously, this is not a pure uranium play because they mm. do a lot of other stuff. Mm. Um, but I know we have talked about material stocks doing well over the coming years. Um, that includes BHP, Fortescue and, and some of those other ones. I mean, Phil and I looked at Newmont Mining yesterday and that's starting to look really, really nice as well. Mm. The old Newcrest. I know we like gold as well, what's going on with there. So there's a whole lot of stocks in there. So we're not saying just to go for some of these uranium stocks, but it's nice to have a little bit of that in your portfolio if you mm. want a little bit of growth right now. Anything else you want to say, guys? You know, oh, no, look. Your final tip? Spot your final on. tip. Final tip, <laughs> tip is... Tip number um, four, the one up your sleeve. The tip, oh, look, Rio's Rio, continuously making higher highs and, and, and breaking highs. It's a growth stock. And like you said, Janine, the fact that it's taken out that GFC mm. high and doing continuing to go higher it's um definitely one people should all right well that is it for our topic for tonight now stay with us as we've still got plenty of emails and stocks to go through we are also going to reveal our thoughts on a viewer's portfolio this is something you don't want to miss now but before we do for those watching on youtube and facebook you can watch all of tonight's show plus the additional exclusive content from tonight's show on talkingwealth.com so head over now and grab your free seven day trial on talkingwealth.com. Now you can also watch our Australian Stock Market Report every Monday where we share our views on the market plus some great buying opportunities. Every week we also share multiple stock tips that will pay for your yearly subscription to talkingwealth.com. Now if that's not enough, you'll also get hundreds of amazing interviews with global industry experts in the stock market, finance, gold, money management, mindset, well-being, fintech and artificial intelligence business and loads more. This is all on talkingwealth.com. Now moving on, if you want to talk about a stock or ask a question, pick up your phone right now and give us a call on 9290-9988. That's 03 for Melbourne, 9290-9988. Or you can text the number on your screen. Whilst we wait for your call, let's get into our next email. Hi team, just a quick question. You have all predicted a crash coming within the next few years. Do you have any predictions on what sectors will be hit the most? And 
Are there any sectors you think will fare well? P.S. Love the show and podcast. Keep up the great work. Regards, Jackson. I'm going to go to you, Janine. Right. Well, if we look at past corrections, yes. then we know that the ones that have been hit the most are things like property. The property sector got really slammed in the GFC. Definitely got slammed in GFC. So that's another one. Um, the other side is to think about the mining stocks because some of the mining stocks actually corrected more than we thought, which was really yes. surprising. Rio was actually one of those that... Um, corrected way more than we expected it would go. But banks tend to be sort of like the norm. If the market's going to correct around 50%, banks are typically somewhere around that yes. is what we see. But um, healthcare stocks correct the least or have in the past. Mm -hmm. So they could be more defensive. Things like um, consumer discretionary could be more de defensive. So those are the sort of areas that I would be looking at. But when there's a big crunch, you know, you've got to ask yourself, do you want to sit there and be holding all of the, a stock in any sector that potentially could be risking a 50% slide? So you're thinking from a, because he's saying what will be hit the worst and what will fare well. So mm. faring well would be more like financials and healthcare. When so I say well, least. when I say well, right, I'm talking about a, you know, 50 to 60 percent correction in the in a lot of banking stocks. Yep. We saw what happened in the Royal Commission, which, su then it'll be 80%. which surprised a lot of people. So if the real estate sector gets affected, then, of course, um, you know, the financials, the banks are going to be impacted. Yep. They can't avoid it. So what about IT? IT is an interesting one, isn't it? Mm. Because, you know, IT is a whole different ball game. But I think that could actually be, this round could it potentially be more defensive mm. or bounce back quicker than some of these other areas. But it's all about where's the money coming from yep. to fund these sort of things. So any mm. startups or any companies that are at that point of the cycle where they're needing capital in, in, to fund what they're doing, they're going to be in trouble. They're going to be slammed. That's mm. what, I, what I was going to suggest because over the next few years, Phil, we're going to see an in, a lot more influx of AI type companies yeah. and a lot of tech companies here in Australia. So that's why I was asking the question. Have you got any thoughts? Yeah, I mean, we, that happened in 2000. Yeah. You know, there was all these tech companies there that when uh, hit the fan, the um, it, it, you, <laughs> actually, nice, aren't you? you actually <laughs> see, you saw that a lot of these companies actually weren't great companies at all and they all got slammed. So, um, yeah, it's going to come down to that. Yeah, there's a lot of smoke and mirrors around, you know, on some of these smaller companies because people are not seeing value in the big companies before the market corrects and so they're jumping into some of these newer companies with the potential for double digit or doubling your money that sort of mm -hmm. stuff it's so a really good question right. this one because mm. you only have to look at some of the sectors and we could do this on another show where we actually demonstrate what happened in the gfc with we the different sectors and which ones peaked first so All great right. question there so comment below if you want janine to do that for you but you must comment below anyway we do have a text now and this one's from zach and who's asking us about zero he says he bought in at 119 dollars in february and he's curious to hear our thoughts Thanks for your question, Zach. Now, Phil, you got it up on the screen? Yep, up on the screen now. I'm just bringing up the 119. You can see that horizontal line there is the 119 buy price in February. Um, look, it's uh, doing having a pullback. Obviously, it's coming out of that nice low in November 22. Had a nice run up. Had a bit of a pullback here to December 2023. And, you know, in the since 2024, it's been straight line running up. So the fact that it's come out and taken this August, July high is a good sign. It's not uncommon for stocks to come back and pull back after that. So right now it looks like normal market movement for me. Um, in terms of getting worried potentially for this stock, I would, I'll just draw up a line here. Well, he doesn't say whether he's holding, wants to short, medium or long term. Yeah, he's just got the he's buy price. It. He's just got the buy mm. price. And it's getting close to the buy price, so I can understand getting a little bit. Uh, He's probably thinking, how far nervous. is it going to go, Phil? And how many stocks and have dip, I made the right buy? Yeah. How many stocks will dip back below their buy price and then take off again? Oh, look, I was only saying oh. to the boys yesterday, like, you know, I bought a stock a couple of weeks ago, and my wife somehow she's worked it out with the broker that she gets uh, messages all the time when I'm <laughs> buying and selling. She went, Well, what, what's that stock doing? I went, it's gone down a little bit and he goes but we're losing money and i go yeah we are and i go just wait now it's in profit i don't hear from my wife yeah. it's like 
she stays quiet when we're making the money, but it happens. You buy yeah. it and it dips a little bit and then it goes again. So you're saying that Zach shouldn't be worried? <laughs> for now, for now, he shouldn't be worried because it looks like it's just pulling back. But if it were to break through this uh, gray line that I've got here and start to break down to that $103, $100 level, then I would start to think, okay, now you need to be worried. And look, if that were to be the case, I hope that, Zach, you've got um, a stop loss in place. Okay. Um, you know, before you've gone into the trade, you've got a level where you're going to cut it and, and um, get out of there yeah. if things keep falling. So you, mm. if, if, can you have a chat about the stop loss that you think you should be doing, Janine? Um, look, it's going to depend on um, how, you know, what his, um, I guess his risk tolerance is. Mm. So it will it'll vary. I mean, you know, if you're looking at this low here, this is around 20%. So what Phil was talking about was, you know, 103 or thereabouts, wasn't it, Phil? Yeah, anything through um, that line. You know, so therefore it's sort of around the 15% mark. So it gives it a bit of room to move, which these stocks can move a bit more. But in terms of the um, percentage upside, when it does turn around, there's still plenty in there. It's not too close to that high to okay. give it a nice challenge. But I'm, you know, like you, quite comfortable with a pullback on this type of stock. All right, so there you have it, Zach. If it goes up, you're fine. But if it goes down, both Phil and Janine are giving you some ideas on where you might protect your uh, capital on that one. Anyway, we do have a text now from Daryl, who is asking about S32. He says, I'm looking at a trade for as long as the trend will go. I mean, it has some high highs and lows on the weekly chart. So S32 for Daryl, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Look, good uh, good stock choice, Daryl. It's um, it's definitely a stock that, obviously, if we just stick to the monthly chart here, it's coming out of a, a, a nice, healthy pullback from March 2022. And we are seeing, as he's mentioned, if we move to the weekly here, it is starting to form those higher highs and higher lows, which, to be honest, we've seen two now with it closing in April above the previous high of March. So... In the short term, I, I um, do see what you're seeing, Daryl. Um, and if you are looking at it from a more short to medium term perspective, you are coming in at potentially the turning point. So mm -hmm. that's quite exciting. Um, if you are looking from a longer term perspective, then because it's been falling for quite a while, obviously, uh, you know, since the all time high there, then perhaps you might want to wait for a little bit more confirmation. But uh, it just depends on what time. Uh, well, this is the stock that you really like, isn't it? Yeah. Sorry, I've cut you off, but yeah. you like this stock, mm. don't you? I do. You, so do you want to, I mean, obviously you're going to be a little bit more medium to longer term on your thoughts on this stock. So what are you thinking Daryl should be doing? Well, look, I mean, what I think Daryl should be doing and what I think um, the stock will do are two different things, aren't they? Obviously. So I think the stock is more likely to go up if we see it head above around, it's close to three. I've got a level somewhere around that that 340 mark but if it goes up there I'm thinking it's going to keep going. The interesting thing about this mm -hmm. is you can see that there's sideways consolidation if I open up the monthly chart then you can see that sideways consolidation there another one here another one there all often quite often around the same level stocks will consolidate for a little while so I'm not too concerned about it shooting off um, quickly at this point even though the month's up. But if he's looking at buying, if he's if he's long term, um, then well, obviously he, he says he wants to follow it as long as it goes up. Yeah, well, I mean, he could even wait for a trend line entry on on the monthly chart. That could yeah. be one option, or wait for some sort of a trigger on the monthly chart if he's got some rules to use. Okay, that could be a good option for Perfect. it. Perfect. Well, thanks, Janine. Thanks, Phil, for that. Now, the next question we have is from Tim, um, and he was sent to us for our Monday stock market report or recording that uh, we do for TalkingWealth.com. But I really wanted to share it here with you, our YouTube fans, as he talks about a type of chart that will assist you over the coming years. Now, Tim writes, hi, Dale and Phil. Wow, I just watched your excellent video about the stock market crash. I was particularly impressed with Phil's market sentiment chart. Now, quick question is that chart, is that chart available to us mere mortals? Or is it reserved for investment royalty like you two? Tim, now we now both Phil and I talked about it yesterday on the market report. We answered the question because we in our recording we did about ten days ago where we talked about when we think the market's gonna crash and all the things, uh, you know, where the peak's gonna happen, how people are gonna trade, the warning signs, all of that sort of stuff. We did that for talkingwealth.com. So you can still go and watch that video on talkingwealth.com. Uh, if you're not already a member, take up that free seven-day subscription and get it. Mm. But I want to ask you about the chart, the type of chart, and why it's important for people over the next couple of years to look at that chart and 
keep watching this show because we'll bring it up a few times, won't we? Yeah, we will. And we've uh, I've actually done a podcast on it as well, on Talking oh, Wealth. Yeah, and you can watch the podcast on Spotify. So um, anyone who's got Spotify, go on to Talking Wealth. Um, and you normally s- listen on Spotify. You listen. normally don't watch. That's the one. <laughs> listen. Is your picture up there? They can look at that. No, no. well, they can print it off if <laughs> they want. But, um, yeah, it'll be on. Uh, it's basically called the Commitment of Traders Report. Yep. Um, that's what it is. And it is, you can get it online. You can get it uh, for free. You just need to type it in and do the research. I have set it on the podcast where to find it and go into details. But why it's important is because it does talk about that dynamic we always speak about. When do the suckers or the retail buy? Um, and when do the professionals buy, meaning the institutions? And we, we all know that, you know, the most of the, the traders that get it wrong are buying right at the top. Yeah. And most of the traders that get it right are selling right at the top and, and all that kind of stuff. And this particular chart shows the dynamic. Mm. It, it shows it to you very, very specifically. It is so, so scary like that because you literally so many times you the market's crashing and the retail buyers, the, their height is just amazing and then when the market's crashed you know where the the instos are high mm. the interesting part it's would really be for me around the gfc yeah but it's, mm. it's so yeah. visually mm. showing people why we keep saying amateurs buy at the top and professionals mm. buy at the bottom and amateurs are selling at the bottom where the professionals are buying and it's so so important so if you haven't checked out that video it's on talkingworth.com get over get a, get your free seven day trial and have a watch of it it's an hour long thing with phil and i just talking about where we think the crash is all of that but we will be bringing that chart up from time to time on the show on youtube just to keep you apprised of you know what we what the retail um end of the market are actually doing so we know when the crash is going to happen uh, a little bit more tighter in terms of time frame for yes. that anyway but remember to show your support for our channel and smash that like button if you enjoy watching and want to see loads more of our content click subscribe now Subscribing helps others find our channel so we can help them too. Now, before we let you go, what was your favorite part of the show? Was it our hot stock tip, our topic for the night, or was it a viewer question? Let us know by commenting below. Thanks to all of those who are watching on YouTube and Facebook. If you're watching on TalkingWealth.com, stay tuned for more exciting picks, insights, and strategies. We'll be right back with that and more. Next week in our main topic, we get into reliable ASX dividend income stocks you can buy now. Make sure you join us next Tuesday night at 7 p.m. Australian Eastern Time. And if you love the show, remember to hit that like button and subscribe to our channel, as this shows your support for the team that puts in the effort each and every week into bringing it to you. If you are subscribed, then you will always know when we go live and put up new content. As always, thank you for joining us for now. Goodbye, good luck, and good trading.